Hi there. I just want to quickly bring something great to everyone's attention. Actress Natalia Tena, who played Asha the Wildling on Game of Thrones, just openly said in a public interview that she really disliked the final season of Game of Thrones and didn't think it made any sense. Her exact words when asked about what she thought of the ending were, I liked it to the bit where Arya stabs the Night King in the heart. I liked it up to then, but after that, I just feel like I just didn't understand. The caliber of writing towards the end and the plots and everything that happens and how they wrapped it up compared to any other season, any other bit, it just feels like it's been written by different people. It doesn't make sense for me. And she goes on a bit after that. It was an interview she gave with a Yahoo podcast called uh, the White Wine Question Time podcast, and the link is below in the video description. Please check it out right after this. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. It, it's short. Uh, the relevant part starts right away three minutes into it. Uh, for legal reasons, I don't want to repost the clip here, and my verbal description can't fully convey the tone or the way she said it. You just you need to hear her doing it. I didn't want to copy it in here. And it's a short interview. It's right at the beginning. They get right into that. Uh, now, I think the whole thing, not just the part I quoted, it was a great response. And not just some poorly thought out, you know, sometimes you just see someone giving an emotional outburst. If I didn't like it, you know, she articulated why she didn't like it. She talks about it some, for some length. You know, it's not lashing out, I didn't like it. Natalia has always struck me as both very intelligent and someone who does not put up with bullshit, but calls it like she sees it, you know, because she didn't interact with fans. Like we've seen her, you know, talking about the, the storyline in some detail in earlier seasons, and very articulately. And also, on top of it, just, it was glorious that, you know how some casual news reporters sound like complete airheads just reciting talking points? And you can tell they're a talking point because they're almost reciting them by rote, that you know, things that can easily be disproven. I'm talking about, you know, that sing-song quality that people get and the, the prosody of their voice changes because they're reciting something. It's not an original idea, uh, a measured idea. They're reciting a stock phrase. Uh, you, you know, like when someone rattles off the excuse and it's like it's hyphenated because of the whole sentence. Well, season eight might be flawed, but, you know, they had limits of time and money and budget. And no, you're reciting something and we can disprove that because it's kind of public knowledge that we know HBO, even casual fans, just in street interviews I've seen in YouTube videos, know that the HBO offered them more episodes, at the showrunners, and they refused, that they wanted this many episodes, that they had unlimited budget and time. They, they took off a year to make this. But you'll still see people, it's the way they recite it as a, well, you know, they're making this appeal to it's obvious. Well, you know, there, there were budget limits. There weren't. And you're reciting a phrase at me without real thought. So that's a lot of build up. What I'm saying is when you see that, she tried to do that with Natalia and she just cut her down. But it was a different one that that after she says how much she disliked the finale and articulated that, you know, specifics, that it didn't really make sense. Uh, to the point she doesn't even recognize it, and different people made it, the host, she started reciting as if it's an original idea, but you can tell it's a phrase that she's quoting off. Well, you know, it, it must be right, because this is the ending they were building to since the beginning. You know, I've seen a lot of people saying, just, well, this is the ending they were building to. Well, no, our specific complaint is that it doesn't feel like the ending they were building to. And just right after, well, you know, this is the ending they were building to, Natalia Tena cuts her down. That, no, she just interjects, no, we're not sure that this is the ending they were building towards. If anything, Natalia herself says, I don't think this is the ending they were building to in the first four seasons I was in. And we don't know that the exact phrase she said, it, no, it's actually kind of murky at the moment, whether this is the ending George R. R. Martin told them or intended, or that the first four seasons were building towards. So it's a perfect moment. I'm butchering her saying, I want you to go and, and listen to it. Just the way she says it, the way she cuts her off. Just, we don't know this is what they were building to. That's why we're upset. So, 
it, it, the relevant part is right at the beginning. It's this crowning moment of awesome for Natalia Tena. She's still our hero and the friend of the fandom. And thinking on that, just the, the, the feels I'm getting from listening to her defend our complaints like this, Asha the Wildling wasn't even that big of a role in the books, but they made it a prominent role in the earlier seasons because of her in seasons one to four. And yes, this is an example of we reconceive the role to make it worthy of the actor's talents. But in this case, it's not re I wouldn't lump it in with that because George R. R. Martin was on board with it. You know, a nor yes, a normal TV adaptation does at time expand certain characters as the, the show grows. Even Martin said, you know, like, you know, I'm going to rewrite Asha in the books, later books, partially because of her performance, that it was a really good take on it because it wasn't just Natalia Tena doing a caricature of her performance in season one, like by season two. They expanded it as in terms of an actual writer sitting down and expanding and giving her more scenes to do. That that was Martin, the hand of Martin expanding a character, not Benny Alton and Weiss expanding a character, you know, really expanding it, not just flanderization. And the, the thing is, it was small enough of a role, but pop, just popular enough. It was in that middle Goldilocks region that this is someone you would see around at conventions a lot. In the old days, Natalia was one of those actors who would go around to all the fan conventions and fan site interviews. You know, like big name actors like Lena Headey or Peter Dinklage, they don't do that many conventions, like your local con. Like, it's a big event when they come to just one major convention versus they wouldn't waste time making the local con circuit and doing multiple conventions in, in a single season versus the, the smaller actors, you know, they have enough free time to be able to do that, but they're big enough that they're a draw. Like really minor characters like Dothraki Rider number two or Lannister Guard number three who has no speaking lines, that's not interesting. But Natalia Tena, Asha the Wildling, that's just important enough that, yeah, I would like seeing her at a convention. She's enough of a draw that it's worth doing an interview with her. So, you know, like her, like the Serio Pharrell actor, that middle level of they're not the, the top tier cast, but they're interesting enough recurring characters that you'd like seeing them at things. Just tell me in the comments, assuredly everyone has a story about this, how much she was interacting with news sites and conventions, particularly in season one and the early seasons. She was one of the main faces that we all saw on a regular basis, just doing little interviews and stuff, just talking about the filming process and things. And she was nice to us. Uh, and she treated us well with honor. So, you know, like the Starks. Um, and she was kind of interesting. You know, she was part of the magic subplot. She's one of the Pete Wildlings who had seen the undead and was running from them. So you know, part of the brand storyline. So it, it's she wasn't so important that doing local cons were beneath her. And she went around to conventions and fan sites and the after show interviews. Did a lot of those, like the Talking Thrones things, uh, Throne Cast. She did a lot. Uh, in contrast, the writers really stopped giving unscripted interviews after season one, and even less onwards. So, Natalia Tena is really... It feels like she's a piece of what this show once was in the early seasons. Even more so, her, her performance was mostly in seasons one to four, specifically... Then the brand storyline went on hold in season five. Then she showed up briefly in season six, had exactly two scenes, one of which she didn't talk in and was really short. She just appears. Her one scene she has dialogue in is so that Ramsey Bolton can kill her off in a way that just felt perfunctory because they had too many characters and wanted to drop her subplot. We can tell this isn't what her storyline is in the next books, and it's not a matter of whether she lives or dies but a matter of how much material she got, and she was shorted. The Rickon actor was shorted, too. Now, the TV show started drastically diverging from the books in season five, and that's when George R. R. Martin stopped writing for it, and I don't think it got worse because he left. I think he left in protest because of what they were intending to do. The, the, the show was so successful, they realized they didn't need him anymore, they intended all these changes, and they were going to do it whether he was there or not, and he's just, I'm not going to enable you by staying. These are, this isn't, oh, because he left. He had no control over it, and when you look at the trends of things they were trying to do the whole time, but I don't want to get into that. 
but it is generally agreed that there is a sharp break in style and story quality between seasons four and five. And it's not because they ran out of books. They pretty much ignored books four and five or sharply condensed them in wacky ways. So just even people defending it, there is this real break between seasons four and five. Five through eight feel like a different show than one to four. Uh, just because it became the Benioff and Weiss show more than the George R. R. Martin show. So because her performance was almost entirely within seasons one to four, and then she was not there, you know, other than as a tourist, you know, one one scene in season six, whereas like the, the Arya actress or the, or the Sansa actress were part of the cult being, you know, uh, there on a daily basis being told, this makes sense, this makes sense. She's, you know, a former, Natalia Tennant is a former actress from seasons one to four, who just, it feels like a relic out of a time capsule or a refugee coming out of seasons one to four. And, you know, if, if you fell into a coma at the end of season four and then woke up after season eight and you looked at it and went, this makes no goddamn sense. It, it's a relic of seasons one to four, the show we once loved, uh, coming right out and criticizing what, what they turned it into. And it, it's just amazing, fantastic. And really, the way to turn the public discourse against Benioff and Weiss is just, no, th this isn't just something I disagree with. I question your writing ability. The, the way to turn the discourse against Benioff and Weiss is a lot like cult deprogramming. The, I also mean like political movements, like, you know, the, the same thing. When you're involved in demagoguery or cults or abuse, you just, the deprogramming, how it works, one of the biggest tools is defection by prominent former members. That does a lot of damage. I'm thinking specifically of, the, you know, like those anti-Scientology campaigns led by former Scientologists do a lot of damage. It, it shakes the faith of people who were wavering in ways that no amount of facts and citations ever could. Although you're lying, you're making that up. You're making up these stories about horrible things they did versus someone in a position of trust who isn't... You see yourself in them. You were a former member of the Scientologists suddenly going... They're saying all these things about it and saying these crazy beliefs they have make no sense. Or, 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 or political ideology, too, just when you get sucked in like that. So it, the best thing is when you see former prominent members openly speaking out against it. It lets people see a path out. So no matter how many documentaries or behind-the-scenes reports we make about crazy things Benioff and Weiss did, even videos of them saying really crazy things they truly cannot have the same impact relative to their size of former cast and crew openly criticizing them. Like um, the season eight inside the episodes, the moment where Benioff says, oh, well, you know, Daenerys just kind of forgot. Like, that was damaging. But in context with the swelling music, with the way it's framed like a real documentary, there are people who will try to defend that, I think. The, the really hardcore ones, versus Natalia Tena, of all people, coming out and saying, this just plain doesn't make sense. Now, obviously, a bigger cast member, like if Amelia Clark came out and openly said, this made no sense, and I feel you wrecked my character, and I don't think you, this was what you were building towards, that, that would be victory. And, you know, it's stepping stones. You're working your way up the food chain. That Now, Natalia Tena is saying that she doesn't think it makes any sense. Maybe, like, uh, Gemma Wellen, Yara Greyjoy level actor can say, would then feel encouraged to say, yeah, I don't really, I feel comfortable coming out in public and saying this doesn't make any sense. And in turn, then Amelia Clarkson, it's the pebbles that start the avalanche. When you have these recurring character actors we all trust coming out and saying, this made no sense. And, you know, one step at a time there, one pebble at a time. And that's how you move a mountain, one pebble at a time, as they say. So, and this has happened a few times before, and it had big impact, like the Barristan Selmy actor, or the Stannis actor, uh, Stephen Delane. That had a big impact, very Stannis-like, just openly saying, I'm not going to give any talking points. The writing for my, I really don't think the writing for my character in Season 5 made any sense, and I have yet to see any real defense of it that the writers gave. That They, they have failed to explain how this makes sense. Well, now we have another one, Natalia, and not just, this isn't even like the Ross actors or something, Natalia Tena was one of the faces of the show in its earliest seasons, intimately, when it was really 
her interacting with fans at conventions, with news sites, and now she has publicly said it made no sense, and it doesn't even feel like it's made by the same people, and watch the clip in the podcast, she openly counters and disagrees that, no, I do not think this is the ending that Martin intended. I do not think this is the ending we were building towards in the first four seasons, or even in the later seasons. So, it, we, wow. Thank you. Tonks don't mess around. And we are very grateful.